A shark that gives birth in three ways, a male seahorse that takes care of the gestation, a wasp that uses other animals to lay its eggs, or a toad that gives birth through its skin. Sit back and watch as these nine animals give birth. Female octopuses are exceptional mothers because their gestation and delivery is not at all like that of other animals on Earth. When an octopus decides to lay her eggs, it means for her that she has to prepare herself for long weeks of sacrifice, because the more she protects them the more likely they are to hatch and survive. The female lays her eggs in clusters on a rock face, incubates them, watches over them, defends them against potential predators. She gently sweeps the currents over them so that they are constantly supplied with fresh, oxygenated water. She never leaves them alone and even refuses to feed in order to remain available for them all the time. Once her hundreds of thousands of eggs hatch, they reveal tiny little octopuses, which are all carried away by the ocean current. As for the unfortunate octopus, it becomes tired, its color changes, the texture of its skin changes, it becomes weakened, shrinks by half, and eventually dies. This death is genetically programmed because it has two optic glands that secrete endocrine substances created for this purpose. By giving birth to its young, the octopus makes a sacrifice of its life. Isn't this the best gift a mother can give to her young? The Pepsis wasp is a rather unusual specimen. It can measure up to 5 centimeters. Its bright colors deter predators. Its sting is considered one of the most painful in the world according to the Schmidt Index and its delivery makes it an even more incredible insect than one can imagine. When she is fertilized and the wasp wants to lay her eggs, easy, she does not look for long. She grabs the first spider she meets on her way. Yes, a spider to be her nanny. To be more precise, the wasp will lay an egg in the abdomen of a mygale or another species of spider after having paralyzed it with its sting. The spider will then, in spite of itself, incubate the egg and when it hatches, it will give birth to a larva, which will feed on the body of the mygale that incubated it, while avoiding eating its vital organs so that it remains hungry. Anyway, we should not ask too much either. During this time, the mother wasp continues its little way, while the larva continues its development and will leave the body of the mygale only when it becomes adult. Well, the disadvantage is that she doesn't see the hatching or the birth of her babies. Too bad, she misses a lot. But the advantage is that she doesn't have to worry about feeding, cleaning the babies, and all the rest. She knows what she's doing, the wasp is not crazy. The platypus is an exceptional mammal. It acclimates as well to water as to land. It has a singular physique, a strange mixture of beaver and duck, and its reproduction is not without particularities either. Indeed, the platypus is certainly a mammal, but curiously the female is oviparous, that is to say, that she lays eggs. And when she decides to lay them, she does not lay more than three. Then during 10 days, the mother rolls up on them, to incubate them as in birds. At their birth, the young platypus are still very fragile, they can't see anything, and are hairless. They thus remain completely dependent on their mother. They cling to her and she protects them, wraps herself around them, feeds them by breastfeeding them, although she has no visible nipples. However, the mother secretes drops of milk through small openings in the skin. The whole period of incubation and suckling is like this. The mother never leaves her nest, except to go to feed very quickly. This requires monumental efforts and sacrifices, especially since these periods last several long weeks, even months. It is only after three or four months that the young finally leave their nest, it is only then that the mother finds her freedom. But at the same time, these hard sacrifices give her at least the satisfaction of becoming a mother. The hippocampus is a small fish that lives in tropical and temperate waters around the world. Also called the seahorse, its lifespan varies between two and four years. Apart from its very particular physique, the hippocampus has an exceptional reproduction. When he wants to reproduce, the male hippocampus looks for a female, so far nothing really exceptional you will say. Except that in the case of the hippocampus, it is the male himself who takes care of the gestation and not the female. First, there is the famous courtship, during which the female embraces the male to introduce her seed. In fact, the female's role is limited to laying 5 to 1800 eggs in the male's ventral bag. As for the latter, he leans on the ground and undulates so that the oocytes can roll to the bottom of his ventral bag. Then begins the management, which can last from 2 to 3 weeks. Regarding the delivery, which is also done by the male, it can last 4 days. And when they are born, the babies cling to an alga with the help of their tail. The poor dad must endure a lot because of all this work, between gestation and delivery, he must certainly finish washed out at each delivery. The female kangaroo is a rather intriguing and fascinating marsupial. Her reproduction is one of the most unusual in the world. 
When she wants to reproduce, she invites the males of her tribe to fight for her. In the end, she will only mate with the strongest. The mating is done as in the majority of animals, but the gestation and the delivery are spectacular. Once fertilized, the gestation period begins, which can go from 30 to 38 days only. Yes, it is short. But you have to see the babies, when they are born, they are extremely vulnerable, almost like little larvae. At birth, they measure only 2 or 3 centimeters and weigh only 1 gr. At this stage, their lungs are not sufficiently developed, and it is their bright red body, whose front limbs are developed, which makes sure to collect and transmit oxygen via the many vessels they have. As you may have guessed, the fetus finishes its growth after birth. Indeed, the little kangaroo is born in a pouch filled with amniotic fluid. When this one is broken, it clings to the coat of its mother to climb as quickly as possible in the incubator bag. To help him, the mother kangaroo shows him the way by tracing with her saliva. It remains there and develops during nearly 250 days. It happens that a second baby settles in the pouch while the first one is not yet out of it and that a third baby is in embryonic stage whose development is suspended while waiting for the place to be released. In short, the female kangaroo gives birth after four weeks, but the biggest work is done when the baby is born. She has to feed it by breastfeeding it and protect it until it is able to feed itself. It is only after five to six months that he points his nose towards the outside world. And there again, he stays in the pouch for another three months, before coming out permanently. As for breastfeeding, it can last up to one year after the baby comes out. Let me tell you that at the end of this whole story, the female kangaroo only wants to take a vacation. Because reproducing for her, induces her to sacrifice herself during several long months. Female dolphins are very fascinating animals. At five years old, they are already sexually mature and can give birth. When a female dolphin is full, has passed 12 months of gestation, and is about to give birth, she performs a rather peculiar dance. She circles around the same point for a long time, while flexing her tail fin and stretching to the maximum. The little one points the end of its tail, then as the mother undulates, it appears little by little until it comes out in one go. The poor mother finishes in blood and exhausted after so much effort. They both go swimming in the depths of the ocean. He, happy to be born to life, and she finally delivered. The female shark is one of the most amazing fish in the world. Her power, courage, and sense of sacrifice are extremely commendable, you will know why. When she is pregnant and decides to give birth, the mother shark has three different ways to give birth to her young, and this obviously varies from one species to another. Either she is oviparous, she lays her eggs directly in the water and they hatch as for any oviparous animal, or she is viviparous, the fetus develops in the uterus thanks to a placenta, and she gives birth as for mammals, or finally, she is an ovoviviparous species and then the eggs develop and hatch inside her abdomen. Once she gives birth, and no matter how she does it, the mother shark completely detaches herself from her young, who go off to make their life elsewhere. And if we were talking about the sense of sacrifice earlier, it is because in most cases, the poor mother has to endure a huge bite on her head that the male gives her in order to immobilize her during mating. It hurts her so much that it takes her a whole month to heal. No wonder she is so disgusted and doesn't want to hear about mating, giving birth, and so on. The good thing is that once she has given birth to her babies, she can go back to her normal life before another shark comes and gets her. The female Suriname toad also called Pippa Pippa is an extraordinary amphibian and so is her delivery. To ensure the survival of as many of her young as possible, the female has a very strange incubation method. She practices during the mating, what is called the amplexus, a technique during which she lets the male cling to her back to release her eggs. The latter will then fertilize them externally if they are still not fertilized. During the days following this strange mating, the skin of the female will close on the eggs as to cover them. That will last between three and four months during which the incubation will be done. In all, the mother will have hundreds of eggs in 60 to 100 pockets of the back. These eggs will become tadpoles which once matured, will instinctively pierce the back of their mother to emerge towards the outside world. They will have become at this stage small toads. Of course, this particular birth will cost the mother her beautiful skin. It will end up completely pierced and damaged after the thousands of toads have emerged. But don't worry, the mother will molt to get rid of her old skin, while the young will be left to their own devices. Well, it will be an opportunity for her to get a new skin, you have to look at the good side of things. The female elephant has a gestation period ranging from 22 to 28 months depending on the species. Once the time of the birth arrives, 
The female feels a very pressing need to give birth to such an extent that the delivery is accompanied by an enormous pain. As with humans, the birth of a baby elephant is a magical moment for the mother and the entire herd around her. When the mother is ready to give birth to her calf, she is surrounded by the other elephants of the herd who quickly understand and will form a circle around her. The mother elephant finds herself protected and safe, which allows her to begin the birthing process in complete serenity. Unlike many mammals, the elephant remains standing during the birth, she barks throughout the delivery process as if to help herself extract the fetus, she then pushes with all her strength so that the limbs of the baby come out and one last time even harder so that it is completely expelled. And each time she moves, all the members of the herd follow her to help her, an extraordinary show. This delivery can last several long minutes and is not without pain for the mother, but once her little one is born, she quickly forgets all the pain she felt and starts to clean him. She may leave exhausted from all the effort but she is so happy with her newborn. So what do you think of these amazing births? Tell us what you think in the comments. And if you like this video, don't forget to give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the bell to receive all notifications.